Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining this informational webinar about the Betty Irene Moore Fellowships for Nurse Leaders and Innovators. I now introduce to you our speaker, Dr. Heather M. Young, who is the National Program Director for the Betty Irene Moore Fellowships for Nurse Leaders and Innovators. Take it away, Heather. Thank you, Jenny. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. This week, we're kicking off our informational webinars about the new fellowship. We're so excited and we're grateful to the Gordon and Betty Moore Foundation for their investment in the future of nursing and our future nurse leaders. Today I'm going to be sharing with you a slide presentation and then we'll go into a more informal question and answer period. Just want to briefly review our agenda for the day. Uh, we'll be first giving you an overview of the, uh, the fellowship itself. I want to review some of the eligibility criteria for the fellowship talk about the curriculum and the project, discuss the logistics of how to apply, and then we'll be talking about some questions. So that's the agenda for the session. First, I want to talk with you about the vision for the fellowship. On your screen, you can see pictures of Gordon and Betty Moore. Um, Gordon was the founder of Intel, and his inventions, his innovation, his ideas, and his leadership changed the world in many ways. Betty, his wife, has had a great deal of experience with the healthcare system. She was a caregiver for many people in her family and uh, about 20 years ago experienced a sentinel, sentinel event herself when she was given a very large dose of insulin that was not intended for her. With that exposure and that experience and understanding the vital role of nurses in our, in our healthcare system, Betty Moore has had a tremendous commitment and a, and a real sense of, of synergy with nursing and what we can offer. With that commitment, the Gordon and Betty Moore Foundation has also committed to advancing health across our nation and the world and improving health systems. They started actualizing that commitment with the Betty Irene Moore Nursing Initiative um, over, over 15 years ago that invested in Bay Area hospitals and in, the, in, in Northern California hospitals to improve safety and quality. They were looking at health system capacity and really enhancing the roles of nurses in that. Their second large investment was a $100 million grant to UC Davis to form the Betty Irene Moore School of Nursing. And I was honored to be the founding dean for the Betty Irene Moore School of Nursing. And at that school, we've had a vision to, for bold system change and for really actualizing and advancing leadership in nursing. This fellowship is their third, third large investment in nursing in the future. I'm very excited about this particular fellowship because it's not only honoring Betty Irene Moore and continuing that legacy, but it's a national scale, an effort to accelerate leadership and innovation in nursing. It's exciting because it's an investment in the next generation of leaders. And when we think about leaders, we think about leaders in a very broad way. It's not just an administrative role, it's leadership and research, leadership and policy and education. And it's, it's cultivating and fostering a community of scholars who share that commitment and a vision to advance health, ignite leadership, and improve health systems throughout our nation. So that's what we're about with the fellowship. With the outcomes of the fellowship, we, we're hoping that our, that our fellows, at the end of, the, of their experience, have an increased leadership capacity that they're further along on their leadership journey, they've expanded their network, and they have confidence to take their great ideas to fruition. So that's what we're about for the fellowship. I'm gonna go into a little more detail now about some of the features of the leadership. That's me, you can see me on screen and you see a slide about me, um, the National Program Director. I'm delighted to be part of this now and the, um, this is an opportunity that comes on the heels of being the founding dean for the Betty Irene Moore School of Nursing. And prior to that, I was a National Director of, in the, the building academic capacity with the Hartford Foundation um, and looking at geriatric nursing. So I've had a lot of experience with national mentorship and leadership in developing the next generation in gerontology. This fellowship is broader than that. It's across the lifespan, but it builds on a lot of my interests and my skills. We're very excited to be partnering not only with the Gordon and Betty Moore Foundation, who are our benefactors, but with the UC Davis School of Management. The UC Davis Graduate School of Manage Management is one of the leading business schools in this country. 
The dean of the Graduate School of Management is a very close colleague of mine, and we are collaborating very closely with a number of his ex excellent faculty to offer the curriculum that will be part of the, of the fellowship. They share a vision with us to make a difference with the work that they do and to enact leadership to make that difference in a sustainable way. So a little bit of detail about the fellowship itself. The target is early to mid-career nursing scholars and innovators. We're very interested in getting people who are five to 10 years out from their PhD. So for the first cohort, that means obtaining a PhD between 2010 and 2015. We are expecting five cohorts in this fellowship program. So if you, if you graduated a little more recently than 2015, uh, put it on your calendar for applying in upcoming years. The reason we chose that period is that the five to 10 years, people may be tenured, they may be pre-tenured, they may be moving along, but have a sense of where they want to go typically, and are able to participate at this point in enhancing their leadership journey. We wanted to have a cohort that would be poised for the, to be the next generation of leaders in nursing. The fellowship itself includes a couple of very important features. There's a leadership and innovation curriculum that's going to be offered in collaboration with the Graduate School of Management. Mentor support, both a local mentor and also a mentor that will be assigning to the fellowship program. And a project. It's a three-year fellowship, and the project is, is funded at the level of $450,000. And that money would go to supporting 30% or more of the fellow's time, plus the additional cost of executing a project. And I'll give you a little more detail about the project in a moment. The idea with the project, coupled with the leadership and innovation curriculum, is that fellows will be able to obtain content and, and expertise that will advance their leadership journey and actually apply it as they execute their projects throughout the period. We're expecting to in include and invite a cohort of about 10 fellows per year. And as I said, as, as this grant is funded for a five-year period, five cohorts um, starting with this year. A little more detail about the curriculum and the activities. We'll be offering this curriculum at an annual convocation every year, and fellows will be expected to come to Sacramento for that annual convocation in the last part of July. This year, it's July 26th to 31st, and that's an immersion, an intensive experience, and it'll be followed by an online educational platform where we'll be able to connect with one another throughout the year. The annual convocation is, will be an experience of, of workshop, meeting with our National Advisory Council, and I encourage you to look at our website to meet our National Advisory Council. There's a phenomenal group of people who are working with us in the design and implementation of this project. The curriculum focuses on developing leadership and innovation capacity. There'll be modules of different, of different courses. Examples include um, a self-reflection exercise where, where fellows will evaluate their own leadership style, their strengths, and their goals and will think about and reflect on what their journey could be like in the next three years and beyond, and what types of skills would be necessary to accelerate and build that journey. There'll be courses in strategic leadership, strategic thinking, uh, managing teams, working in diverse contexts of diverse teams, thinking about um, design thinking, communication, communication with different stakeholders, the business world, if you're thinking of commercializing, or implementing a project into practice. So a variety of different leadership opportunities and, and skill building that will occur in the, this workshop with application throughout the year as we get together and join one another on the educational platform. We also want this curriculum to be a chance for the cohort to form as a learning community and to be together in the immersion and then to be together throughout the program in the online format. Um, oftentimes leadership is a lonely enterprise and we want to build that sense of support and connection so that we can be cheerleaders for one another as we move along this journey. The mentors are really important as well. Having a local mentor, someone who gets identified by the applicant during the application process, who understands the project, understands the mentee, and can help them to advance their work. Our National Advisory Council will participate in selecting our cohort of fellows 
And in that process, we'll uh, become to an understanding of what the projects are and what the goals of the, of the fellows are. And with that, we'll be able to help us brainstorm and select and identify additional mentors who can also help with that journey. We're very interested, as I said, in building this community of scholars and connection. And to that end, alumni are always welcome to be part of our programs and part of our connections. And we'll fund alumni to come back for two convocations afterwards. And I bet they'll show up as people who will be talking on our, our future agenda as well. I'm going to review eligibility for the program. First of all, institutional eligibility. As we deliberated about this fellowship and set up the program, we realized that it was vital that the institution be highly supportive of the fellow for them to be able to accelerate their journey. We started by looking at academic settings, schools of nursing, programs in nursing that could be eligible, and wanted to identify those who had a strong record of having an investment in nursing science and scholarship. And to that end, we have a list of eligible academic nursing programs, and they're on the website. You can click on that and, and see the, the universities and colleges that are included. We also recognize that there are nursing scientists in many other settings who are making important contributions to healthcare, and we want to help to foster their journey as well. So there are people in health systems, public health departments, governmental agencies, in policy institutes, and these people are also welcome to join our fellowship cohort. For those who are in a, one of these settings, not on our eligible academic list, we would ask that the applicant describe how the organization demonstrates commitment to nursing science, innovation, and leadership. So it might be, for example, a hospital that has a nursing, nursing scientist that are a part of the team and a part of the, part of the collective in that health system. It might be a center for innovation or nursing science, but the applicant would need to describe how the organization demonstrates that commitment. The rationale for that is that we want both commitment from the organization to the nurse scientists through the program, but we want to make sure that when the program is completed, the applicant, the fellow, will then be able to continue on their trajectory with their organization. I'll turn to applicant eligibility now. As I said earlier, we we're targeting early to mid-career nurse scientists and scholars. We expect a PhD conferred between 2010 and 2015. And if, the, if, a, if an applicant has had an approved formal leave and may have graduated a couple of years before that, um, that's something I can certainly talk about with an applicant and consider. Um, for example, there, there are different types of leave circumstances where the tenure clock is slowed down. And for those kinds of applicants, uh, they would be eligible as well. We're looking for at least one degree in nursing or nursing science. We recognize that our nursing scholarship community is, is quite diverse and that there are people who may not have an RN license but who have a PhD in nursing science, and those applicants are also welcome. It's vital that the applicant is able to firmly commit to at least 30% effort starting in July for the full three-year period. And we'll ask the applicant to attest to that. And we'll also ask the dean or the CEO of the health system to attest to the commitment of supporting that level of, of effort. We also, because the annual convocation is such a vital part of the fellowship program, we would need a commitment to attend the annual convocation and to participate in our online mentorship and learning activities. We've had quite a few questions about the project, and I want to talk a little bit about that. As I said, the project budget is around 450000 so it's a substantial project over the three-year period. For the application purposes, we're looking for the innovation, the idea, and the perspective of the applicant about what is the important question that you want to deal with? What is the problem that you'd like to solve? And what are your thoughts about how to go about solving that problem or understanding the phenomenon better? So we want an important question, and we want to have either that or developing and testing an innovative idea. The project can take several different forms, because we are very inclusive about innovation and leadership in our thinking about this fellowship. A research study would be a, a, a one example of an appropriate type of a project. And with a budget of around 450000 that you could think about an R01-like or R21-like application. Um, as being a comparable type of a proposal for a research, research study. 
It could also be an evidence-based intervention that a person is wanting to design and test an, in an intervention in a clinical setting. In this case, one of the, the, the key pieces of the fellowship is generating new knowledge. So in, with an intervention using uh, implementation science, it would be important to document and to evaluate the implementation aspects of that intervention testing, design and testing. So taking a lens of implementation science to the end of generating new knowledge. It could be an invention with a rapid design, rapid recycle design process. Again, generating new knowledge about that invention, but it could very, very reasonably be an invention that goes to commercialization or on the path to commercialization. So there's a, there's a variety of different possibilities with this. We've been intentionally open about what these could be. And as you look at the application in more depth, you'll notice that the questions are not phrased in a typical research study design way where we say, what's your innovation, what's your aims, what are your methods? We're very interested as we look at your applications to understand how you think about these issues. What's important to you? What's the difference you want to make with the work that you do? February 28th is going to come up very quickly, and we recognize that it's a short period to come up with a complete and final research proposal or, or project proposal. So the way we're, we're working this is we want to get your thinking by February 28th, a very good sense of where you want to head and what your vision is. And then the first few months of the fellowship will be an opportunity to work with our faculty, work with our National Advisory Council, and work with me to fine tune that proposal so that by January 1st, 2021, the proposal for the project and the budget for the project would then be final. So as you prepare the February 28th submission, think about it as a very good draft that's thought through well, but be open to the idea that it could morph a little bit more and that you'll benefit from consultation from a number of experts as we shape your final proposal. So for the timeline for the study, imagine that it would start in January and that you would have that, the, the period after that to execute and evaluate your project. I want to talk about the logistics of application, how to apply. There's a two-part process for this, for this project, for this fellowship. The first piece is the Qualtrics application. And if you haven't already done that and you're interested in applying, you can request a link from our website and it will give you a custom save-as-you-go access to our application. It's really important that you have this link because then you can work on the application, go away for a while and come back and complete some more. That enables that saving feature. It also helps us to know who's, who's working on an application so I can think about the review panels and make sure that we have the appropriate people available to, to conduct the reviews when, that comes, when the time comes. The Qualtrics application is also available um, in a PDF for, form on the website so you can preview what's in the actual online interactive application. You can prepare the answers to your questions in a Word document and cut and paste them into the field. You'll notice that the Qualtrics application has both demographic questions and, and, and drop-down menu type opportunities, but most of it is, is, is guided narratives with word counts, and the word counts are very strict. But we ask you to reflect on such things as your leadership journey today, your vision for the future, the idea that you're grappling with, what, what, what problem do you want to solve? And what are your thoughts about how you might approach that? Some of the challenges you might, might encounter. It's your chance to show us how you think what's important to you. We're also interested in that application in you talking about how this fellowship would accelerate your career, accelerate your leadership journey, because this is a partnership and the project is a piece of it. We're interested in that complete picture of who you are and how this fellowship in particular would be of benefit to you. Then there's a second part to the application that's also important and it's essential to be considered a complete applicant. Um, and that is a single PDF of required materials. There's a list of materials also on the website and we would like you to prepare them and save them as a single PDF in the order that we prescribe on the website. And this includes such things as, as a biosketch. We're asking you for an NIH-style five-page max biosketch for you. It would include your letter from your dean, and the dean's letter would, would attest to their support of you 
and also there are um, some issues around the budget that I'll get to get into in a moment. A letter from your mentor and your mentor's biosketch. So when you have assembled all of those materials, you can prepare them in a single PDF and then email them to the website address that's on the web there. So I encourage you to visit the website and explore that aspect of the application process. And if you run into questions, of course, I'm always happy to answer any of those that arise. I want to review the timeline. It's a rather aggressive timeline. We were very fortunate that this grant was, was granted in the last part of last year. And we've had a very quick startup period for it because the goal is to have our fellows on site for July this year. So this year's time, this process is a little bit shorter than it will be in, in upcoming years. We opened application on January 9th, and we're expecting the applications by 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on the 28th of February. Now this is a, is a relatively short period of time, but that's when we'll close this batch of applications and they'll go into the next phase of review. Um, any applications that come in after February 28th at 5 p.m. would be considered on a space available basis only. So for cons full consideration of your application, please meet that deadline. That includes both the Qualtrics and the single PDF documents. Once those applications have all been received by us, we'll be engaging in a very rapid cycle review process of our own with our National Advisory Council. And we'll be notifying the finalists out of all the applicants who have been selected for interviews by March 20th. We'll be holding in mandatory in-person interviews at Sacramento between April 6th and 8th. We will pay the travel expenses for those interviews. And the interviews will occur during one of those days. When we let the finalists know in March 20th, we'll also assign the appointment time so for planning purposes for travel. Um, but you wouldn't be expected to be here for the three full days, just one of those days. So we'll be notifying people in March, March 20th, about the interviews and expect to see our lead applicants, our finalists, between April 6th and 8th. We'll make our decision very quickly after that and notify the successful fellows of their acceptance on April 15th. So it's a tax day and a notification day. Um, we would very much appreciate hearing back from, from fellows confirming whether they're going to be joining the fellowship by the 22nd of April so that we can manage our wait list. And then there'll be the period of contracting with the various organizations and getting that fellowship up and running. And the, July, the cohort will begin their fellowship experience July 1st. At that time, there'll be some pre-work um, in preparation for our annual convocation, which is when we'll come together at the end of July with our Fellowship National Advisory Council and the, and the faculty of the program for our welcome and immersion experience. And again, I just want to thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today and to participate in this, in this webinar. I wish you all the best in the, in the process, and please know that we're here and ready to answer and support, uh, support you as you as you move through this journey. Thank you very much for joining today.